Council members and members of the public, my name is Phil Cohen. Here we are at another 4-4 deadlock, gridlock city council meeting. Two weeks ago, I was here addressing the ridiculous lawsuit against the city that four council people insist on pursuing. Instead of addressing the huge problems we face in the wake of Hurricane Sandy, our elected officials play political games, tie up the city in legal knots, and waste our money. After Carol Marsh unexpectedly resigned effective October 3rd, the council minority realized they had an opportunity. So the four of them hired Mayor Roberts and Mayor Camerano's corporation council, Steve Kleinman, and asked him for his advice. By the time of the October 3rd council meeting when appointing Carol Marsh's replacement was the first item on the agenda, they believe that appointing a new council person requires five yes votes, and Mayor Zimmer can cast a decisive fifth vote, but only to break a 4-4 tie. So they figured if one of them stayed away, there could never be a 4-4 tie, Mayor Zimmer could never cast the fifth vote, and the council minority would regain control of the city council. Do you remember when we were afraid that the Hoboken University Medical Center was going to fail? With critical city council votes scheduled and special meetings scheduled, Councilwoman Marsh was stuck in a hospital in Nicaragua dealing with her husband's medical crisis. Yet, Carol Marsh found a way to call in from a Nicaraguan hospital out of the country, participate at the council meeting, do her job, and provide the key votes to save our hospital and save our city. I remember that. Well, what happened October 3rd? Councilwoman Mason stayed away from the meeting on the vote for Jim Doyle's appointment. Only three members of the city council minority attended, and none of them voted for Jim Doyle. I'm not aware of any arrangements Councilwoman Mason made to call in and participate on October 3rd. After Jim Doyle was sworn in, the members of the council minority who showed up at the October meetings protested loudly and repeatedly how improper Jim Doyle's votes were. They knew. One of them had stayed away, and they had created the problems they would use to sue the city. Two weeks ago, Mr. Russo and Ms. Castellano didn't like what I had to say in the public portion. They didn't deny that they had a plan to prevent a 4-4 tie vote, but they claimed Judge Bariso agreed with them when he ruled that Jim Doyle's appointment was illegal. Nonsense. Judge Bariso never ruled that Jim Doyle's appointment was illegal. He ruled the vote was ineffective because it lacked five votes, agreeing with Mr. Kleinman's view that five yes votes were needed and disagreeing with our city's attorney's position that four yes votes were sufficient. But at the same time, Judge Bariso said that he would consider whether he could require all eight council people to finally show up and vote on Jim Doyle's appointment at one time. And that's exactly what Judge Bariso did. Ordering the four of you to come here and finally vote on Jim Doyle's appointment at the last council meeting. Council people are paid about $25,000 a year with benefits, and for that we expect council people to attend at least two meetings a month. Now I know there's more to being a good council person than that, but showing up at two council meetings a month seems to be the minimum. That's why I don't understand why you four, rather than dropping your lawsuit, showing up for work, doing your job, and voting on Jim Doyle's appointment, insist on dragging out your lawsuit, making a desperate appeal to the appellate court that has no chance, instead of simply obeying Judge Bariso's order, showing up to vote, as the four of you should have done in October, and just getting on with it. As I said to Mr. Russo and Ms. Mr. Acapinti, Ms. Mason, and Ms. Castellano two weeks ago, and as I will repeat again tonight, in your quest for power, you've lost all perspective. I guess you figure every day Jim Doyle is not a councilman is a win. But every day you four drag out this ridiculous farce of a lawsuit is another day the city has to pay its lawyers to defend it. We have real work to do in this city. Vote up or down on Jim Doyle's appointment. Stop suing the people of Hoboken and stop wasting the taxpayers' money. Thank you.